Rick Guerin is a guy whose name I have seen pop up in books and articles and whatnot through the years as someone who is kind of in the Buffett club going back to the 50s and 60s. He was kind of like one of the original deep value investors from that gang, kind of that Wu-Tang of value investors who came about, you know, in the in 50s and 60s. And it actually used to be a trio of Buffett, Munger, and Rick Guerin. The three of them used to kind of be a, a trio making investments. And Buffett has talked about when when Berkshire bought Seas Candy, Rick Gurren went with Buffett and Munger to interview the CEO. Like they were a trio together and everyone knows Buffett and Munger now. But then there's this question of what happened to Rick Gurren. And several years ago, Monish Pabrai, who's a hedge fund manager, won one of the charity lunches with Buffett where he paid like 600 grand to have lunch with Buffett. And he asked Buffett, he said, what happened to Rick Gurren? I know he used to be part of the tribe and then he kind of, you know, he's still around, he's still investing money, but he's he, he kind of broke off from the Buffett and Munger. He said, what happened to him? And Buffett told him a story that uh, back in the 1970s, Rick Gurren had a bunch of margin debt. He was, I think he owned his Berkshire Hathaway stock on margin. And during the 1970s bear market, he got a margin call. And Buffett said it was actually Buffett himself who purchased the Berkshire stock from Rick Gurren so that Rick Gurren could make his margin call. And the point that Buffett made to Pabrai uh, was he said, Charlie Munger and I always knew we would be rich. He said it was there was no doubt in our mind that we would be rich. So because of that, we were not in a hurry. We weren't in a hurry to get rich. We knew it was going to happen. It was inevitable. We just had to play our game and do it. But he said Rick Gurren was just as smart as Buffett and Munger, but he was in a hurry. He wanted uh, he, he wanted to get rich faster than, than Buffett and Munger did. And to me, that's fascinating. A, because so much of what we talk about in the industry or what we look for in the industry is intelligence. And when Buffett says Rick was just as smart as he and Munger, uh, he, had, he had the same amount of intelligence, but he didn't have kind of the behavioral instincts, I think that Munger did, of patience. Something so simple and basic. The, the phrase that Buffett uses where he says Rick was in a hurry is so fascinating and important to me that you can take someone who's just as smart, who just who's, who just doesn't have the grasp on behavior as well as Buffett and Munger did, and it breaks everything. Now, I, I think Gurin did go on to still become a successful hedge fund manager. I think he, he recovered from his accident, so to speak, but not to the, the degree that Buffett and Munger did. And I think if you were to look at um, the... Archegos hedge fund meltdown that just happened a month ago, or what's going on with GameStop and some of the hedge funds that got blown up from that. I think you see the same thing. You find people who are very smart, very intelligent, but they're in a hurry, or or they don't have any, or you know, any of the dozens of behavioral flaws that are necessary to avoid to become a successful investor. Uh, and this this is to me is kind of the premise of my book. It's just that good investing is not about what you know. It's not about how smart you are or where you went to school or you know how sophisticated the Excel model you have is. Good investing is overwhelmingly just about how you behave. It's about your relationship with greed and fear and your ability to take a long-term mindset and who you trust, how gullible you are, those kind of things. And to me, the, the most important part is that behavior is hard to teach. It's almost impossible to teach, even to someone who's very smart. You can teach them calculus and you can teach them uh, data analysis, you can teach them how to read a balance sheet, but you can't teach people how to be patient. It's just some people have it and some people don't. That's, that can be disheartening to hear, but I think it's really true. And all the evidence that we have shows that that is true. That I don't think there's any evidence, unless we're talking about like the marshmallow test at like a really basic level. I don't think there's much evidence that people who are extremely intelligent are also going to be patient investors. Or the opposite, the people who don't have a lot of training and sophistication they, those people can be patient, very successful investors. And I think it's just very easy to overlook that in this industry, the disconnect between behavior and intelligence.